If you love the cinnamon sweet goodness of apple pie, but don't wanna peel and slice a whole bunch of apples, I think you're gonna love today's recipe for baked apples. There's very little effort required for this recipe. All you've gotta do is core a few apples and then stuff them with an oatmeal raisin sugar mix that is perfectly spiced with cinnamon and nutmeg, and then bake them. The end result is a deliciously warm, soft apple filled with the best of fall sweet flavors. And because it is warm, I think it's just begging to be topped with a scoop of ice cream, some whipped cream, or some of my salted caramel sauce. Now before we dive into today's recipe, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed because I've got a bunch of new recipes coming your way for fall and winter. All right, let's make some baked apples. To get started, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll measure out our filling ingredients. That includes a third cup of old-fashioned rolled oats and a quarter cup of coconut sugar, which also imparts a slight caramel sweetness. Then you'll need a quarter cup of chopped nuts. I love pecans, they're my favorite nuts for holiday baking, but you could also use walnuts, pistachios, or any other nut you prefer. And then use a large chef's knife to roughly chop them up and transfer them to a mixing bowl. Next, you'll need a quarter cup of raisins, dried cranberries, or any other dried fruit. And while the raisins are already pretty small and don't really need chopping, I still like to give them a rough chop just so that every bite of the baked apple gets a little bit of all of the flavors. To that, I'll add some autumn appropriate spices, including one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And to help bind everything together, two tablespoons of melted butter or ghee, and if you're vegan, you can also use coconut oil. Then give that a stir so that it's all combined and just set it aside. So let's chat about apples and the best variety of apples to use for this recipe. Because if you didn't know, all apples do bake a bit differently. For this recipe, you want the apples to be soft on the inside while maintaining their firm shape. I'm using Honeycrisp apples today, which are one of my personal favorites, but any large baking apple like Fuji, Gala, Cortland, Pink Lady, Jazz, or Brayburns should work just fine. You'll need four apples, and once they're selected and washed, you'll wanna scoop out some of the inside, and the best way to do that is to use a melon baller. But if you don't have a melon baller, you could use a paring knife and a small spoon. So I'll scoop out the core and make sure to get all of the seeds out, then remove some of the apple so that I have a cavity about an inch and a half wide. And you wanna get close to the bottom without coring all the way through, otherwise your filling will just fall out the other end. Next, I'll use a paring knife to remove about a half inch of the skin around the top. Not only does this help to prevent the apple from bursting while baking, but it also gives a slightly flatter surface on top. And if you noticed at the beginning of the video, I really stuff my apples with a ton of filling, probably 50% more than most baked apple recipes, and pile that filling high on top because I think that's the best part. And I also think it makes them prettier to serve when the filling is sort of overflowing out of the apple. Also, if you notice an apple sort of wobbling, you can slice a little bit off the bottom to make it more stable. But try not to take too much off as it will deflate a little bit where you've sliced it. Once that's done, place the apples upright in a baking dish. If you're doing just four apples, a square eight inch by eight inch pan works great. Then squeeze a little bit of fresh lemon juice over the edges of the apples and inside the apples. All right, now it's time to stuff the apples with the cinnamon, oat, raisin, sugar mixture. You wanna do your best to evenly divide the mixture, so I tend to stuff them with a heaping spoonful the first round, then evenly divide whatever filling is left over, and I just squish it down on top pretty tightly to make sure that it stays put. And the chopped raisins help with this part, keeping the filling sort of stuck together. Add 3 quarters cup of apple cider or apple juice to the bottom of the pan. This helps to steam the apples and we'll use it for basting here in a second. Then transfer the stuffed apples to the oven and bake for 45 to 60 minutes. Because all ovens do cook slightly different, keep an eye on your apples after the 45 minute mark and check on them every five minutes or so to see if they're done. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to baste the apples a couple of times throughout the cooking process. 
And if you don't have a baster, you could always use a spoon. Though I do think it's worth grabbing a baster, especially as I've got some turkey recipes coming up and a baster is just a good item to have in the kitchen. So I'll link the one I'm using below. Towards the end of the baking time, you may notice the apples slightly deflate, and that's fine, but they're done when they're tender when pierced with a fork or knife. And just personal preference, I like my apples on the softer side rather than the firmer side, so I always cook close to the full amount of time. Remove the baked apples from the oven and you'll be rewarded with two things, an amazing dessert and a home that smells like all of the flavors of fall. Before serving, I like to spoon or baste any leftover syrupy liquid from the pan because now it's sticky sweet with sugar mixed in and you don't want that to go to waste. The baked apples are done at this point and you can serve them as is, but I think these warm apples are just begging to be topped with ice cream or whipped cream and you could use dairy or dairy-free options. You could also drizzle some of my homemade vegan caramel sauce on top for ultra decadent baked apples. One thing to note is that the apples will crinkle and deflate a bit as they cool, and that's normal and to be expected. I think it adds to their overall character. But before they cool down too much, I do wanna to top them with a mini scoop of ice cream. The ice cream will melt and ooze down the sides, and when you slice them up, you'll get a scoop of apple, the filling, and melted ice cream all in one bite. These baked apples are an easy sweet treat that's perfect for fall and winter, and I hope you guys love this recipe as much as I do. Don't forget that the printable version is always linked in the description box below, and there's extra tips on the website as well. And with that, I will take my bite, and I will see you guys again next week.